And I think, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, my story is recorded for you. Now, again, what a wondrous gift of grace that God has given you something that you call the Bible. I was only able to read from the Hebrew scriptures, but you have something of the stories of Jesus himself as well as the church. What a wondrous gift that the Bible is for you. I hope you take full advantage of that gift and read it and consume it daily. There is one author in the Bible that holds my story, and he's the only author of Gentile origins that is given credit as an author of the book. Uh, his name is Luke, and he's given two uh, books that he's written, the gospel after his name, as well as the account of Acts in which my story is in. I was traveling down from Jerusalem on the road to Gaza one day as I was leaving worship in Jerusalem, and this young man approached, and my guards, they wanted to hurt him and keep him to protect me. Now, you see, you must understand, I'm the treasurer to the Queen Candace of Ethiopia. Now, treasure is not just money. It's about stores and provisions, not only for the military, but for all the people of Ethiopia. Now, I, like Luke, feel that I need to maintain my anonymity for you. My name is not important, but the story is. So as I was traveling, the, this young man came up, and these guards, my guards, they stopped him. And I said, no, he looks like a friend. Allow him to come forward. And he found out that he told me that an angel of God had asked him to come and be with me and stay with me. So I, I invited him up into my chariot, for I was reading the Hebrew scriptures, the prophet Isaiah. And I was at the point where the prophet said, he is like a sheep led to the slaughter, like a lamb before his shearers. He was silent, and he opened not his mouth. He was deprived of justice in his humiliation. Who will speak of his descendants? I turned to Philip and I asked him, is the prophet speaking of himself or is he speaking of someone else? Philip said, at that very passage, he began to proclaim and declare the good news of Jesus to me. And my heart felt strangely warm. But something within me burned, and I knew that what Philip was sharing was true. And I knew from the Hebrew scriptures all the way to this day where you have the entire Bible, God has been faithful to keep his word to us. And as Philip spoke these words of the good news of Jesus Christ, I knew that it was true. And as we continued in our journey, I saw a body of water, and I asked our party to be halted. And I turned to Philip and I said, what prevents me from being baptized even now? And Philip said, if you believe in your heart, with your whole heart, you may be baptized. And I declared that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so Philip took me down to the waters and I was baptized. And when we came up, Another wondrous thing happened. The Spirit of God whisked Philip away, and I went away rejoicing. Today, church, I ask you, is your heart strangely warmed? Does your heart burn with passion? Are you set on fire from the Spirit of the living God? Now I know we must read scripture, but it's not enough to read scripture. We must take that written word and allow it to soak deeply into us and let it become living word. I'm going to ask you to do something. I know it's difficult for you to talk to strangers. But if you would, but you know, let me just share this. If we cannot talk to someone in this congregation that we may not know, how will you ever go out into the world and speak to complete strangers that is not in a congregation? 
So I'm going to ask you to get into groups of four, and we will give you some time to discuss some questions that I've asked for you. Who are your Ethiopians? And where will you go to find them, just as Philip found me on the road to Gaza? Who will be your chariot drivers? Oh, we tend to think about Philip and myself in the story, but there were guards and chariot drivers as well. How will you engage them? Where will you allow and provide spaces within your congregation when these new people come to be with you? Are you afraid of being used by the Holy Spirit in unique and even strange ways, just as Philip was? How may you practice the disciplines of prayer and fasting? Who are the Philips in your congregation? Who among you have the gift of evangelism? And how might you help them utilize those gifts? And then finally, what is your story. How will you practice your story? And who is the very next person when you go home? Who is the one person you will share your story with? Now I ask you at this time to get together in groups of four, quickly introduce yourselves and go over those questions. Provide answers for yourself that you may take home with you. Or again, all too often, we think about the people that have great, great prominence. We think about those ones, those main characters when we read scripture, like myself and Philip. But let's not forget those chariot drivers, those people behind the scenes that are often overlooked. The spaces in your places of worship, where can you create new spaces for others to come in and join with you? How far and where will you go to greet and meet these new people? How will you allow the Holy Spirit to use yourselves in new and fresh ways? And finally, how will you share your story with someone brand new upon your return? Now, as a church, I've come to understand that you have a great history from John and Charles Wesley all the way to your first woman bishop. But I also understand there is some discouragement among you. I would ask that you watch these neat, moving pictures with sound. The particular piece that I wanted you to see was a girl named Alice and a man named the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter turned to Alice and he said to her, Alice, you're not the same anymore. You used to be so much, muchier. You've lost your muchness. You can't leave me here. You don't, silly. Do you have any idea what the red queen has done? You don't, silly. I couldn't if I wanted to. You're not the same as you were before. You were much more, much here. You've lost your muchness. My muchness? In there. Something's missing. Tell me what Red Queen has done. Susquehanna Conference, do you feel sometimes you've lost your muchness in here? Today 
is the day of salvation. Today is the acceptable day of the Lord. Today, you can regain your muchness. Return back to your places of worship, back to your communities, back to your homes, invigorated with the Holy Spirit. Regain your muchness, the rich heritage that you have, and begin to create a new heritage. Let us pray. God of the living waters, we come before you today. Show us, reveal to us, whisk us to the Ethiopians and the chariot drivers among us. Help us to empower the evangelists, not only in our congregations, but within our own souls. Help us to know our story, share our story, especially to the one. Help us, Lord, to remember what our heritage is, what a rich heritage you've given us from Jesus Christ through the Wesleys, even to each person here seated amongst us. Lord of the living waters, give us such a fire in our hearts that we may build and become a greater annual conference where other churches would come and see how we do church, not because of us, but because of you. Lord, we ask these things, we pray these things for the magnificent glory of your son Jesus and for all the earth's greater benefit that we may be transformed in the, the image of your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Amen.